Mike Judge, creator of Beavis and Butthead and co-creator of King of the Hill, comes a movie about people who go to work. <laughs> who are part of a team. And remember, next Friday is Hawaiian Shirt Day. Okay, if I could set the building on fire. Who respect their boss. We need to talk about your flair. Well, I have 15... 15 pieces on. 15 is the minimum. Brian, for example, has 37 pieces of flair on today. <laughs> and a terrific smile. And need to escape. I don't like my job, and I don't think I'm going to go anymore. One of these days, I, I, I just I just kick this piece of... I'm thinking now it might be more fun to just get fired. And I've always wondered what that would take. Oh, Peter, listen. Uh, well, it looks like you've been missing quite a bit of work lately. Well, I wouldn't say I've been missing it, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a straight shooter with upper management written all over him. We're going to be getting rid of these people here. Mr. Samir. Okay, thank you. Night eat in the Not going to work here anymore anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't been showing up and you get to keep your job. Actually, I'm being promoted. Thank you, Bob. This is a... It suck! They're going to throw you out on the street so that Bill Lumberg's stock will go up. Mm. It's completely unfair. Inatech deserves to go down. We're just the guys to do it. Tell me about that virus you're always talking about. The one that could rip off the company for a bunch of money. I'm not going to do anything illegal, Peter. Illegal? Samir, this is America. The worst they're gonna do is they put you in a white collar minimum security resort for a couple of months. You know they have conjugal visits there? I might be showing them my old face. Oh, oh. They let you have sex with women? They sure do. Okay, I'll do it. Office space. I know you've been getting pretty depressed about your job and everything, and so I just wanted to tell you good things can happen in this world. I mean, look at me. <laughs> Welcome to Dorking Out. My name is Sonia Mansfield, and I don't really like to talk about my flair. Joining me is my podcasting sister from another mister, the co-host of Dorking Out, and the hardest office space worker I know, Margot D. Hello, my friend. This is my swing line stapler, and they told me I wouldn't move anymore. I, I, I was told I wouldn't have to move my desk again. I'm going to set the building on fire. We are dorking out about 1999's Office Space. It's directed and written by Mike Judge, who also, it's based on the comic strip Milton. Uh, this is his second movie, because his first one was Beavis and Butthead Do America, which is on the list, everybody. We will get to Beavis and Butthead Do America eventually. Absolutely. But we got to do Office Space first. It stars Ron Livingston, Jennifer Aniston, adorable. Everybody drinks. She's a, this is the perfect use of Jennifer Aniston. She's adorable. Stephen Root, Gary Cole, so funny as Bill Lumberg. Uh, John C. McGinley, David Herman, A.J. Nadu, I think I got it right. And Diedrich Bader as Lawrence the Neighbor, who oh. is so funny and 100% would vote for Trump now. But that's okay. Yeah. We got to let it slide. <laughs> he's so, but he's so funny in this movie. Did you see this movie in the theater? I actually did. With my friend Margaret. I'm like, listening. we were the two people who saw this movie in the theater. <laughs> there, was, there was actually a decent number of people because I think it was on the Monday after it opened. So people were talking about it. Mm -hmm. And Margaret and I were like, uh, let's go see it. Like it was after work. And we worked for this hellish woman who was horrible. And it was like, mm -hmm. the, and we just everyone who's worked an office job knows all the shit that's going on here. Yes. And we loved it so much. And then you had, and then like, it's like four or five months later, it went out on video and then everybody saw it. Yes. I saw it in the theater, like op opening night. Nobody in the theater was laughing as hard as I was because I was currently in like a a job very similar to that. Like I was working in a cubicle. It was like the stuff with a printer, all of that. I was like, this is all 100% relatable. And then, yeah, once it came out on video and then after that, it went to Comedy Central where it basically 
played 24 hours a day every day I think it's still there <laughs> i think if we flipped on comedy central it would be in the it would be in the lineup if nothing else yes it's not on right now so the, yeah. mo- the movie didn't make a ton of money in the theater it looks like it made 12 million dollars which is i mean it didn't even make its money back in the theater but once it hit video and and comedy central everyone has seen this movie and it's insanely quotable and what's your favorite quote what's the thing you think you use the most oh the stapler because i have a swing line stapler (laughs) on my desk why why should i change he's the one that sucks yes what that Uh, no talent ass clown (laughs) die motherfucker die when i'm like frustrated Mm -hmm. with office equipment uh so many things yeah, I use the case of the Mondays. Case <laughs> <laughs> of the Mondays. I definitely refer to TPS reports at least once a week. <laughs> and the yeah, I'm gonna need you to blah blah blah. Like that definitely happens at some point. Um, yeah. It, 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 the reason, by the way, that I wanted to talk about this this week is because we actually had layoffs at my job this Aww. week. And I was like, I think I need to watch Office Space because I feel like it might cheer me up, strangely, even though I'm like living this right now. I work for a tech company. Um, some of it, this, this movie still holds up. Yeah. It holds up. There's, I know a lot of people work from home now, but there's a lot of people that don't and they're back in their offices and cubicle culture is definitely still a thing. And there's things but, in this office movie. Politics yes. And office are still, it doesn't matter yes. if you're home or not. Yeah, exactly. It's actually harder if you're at home because you don't have anybody to turn around. It, that's when the Slack channels go crazy at work. Yes. I have a million Slack channels at work. I have the fun ones that are, you know, we all talk about, we have like a, a love is blind Slack channel and we have a, you know, skincare channel, but we also have one that's just for yelling where people can type in all caps (laughs) and one for whispering. That's all lowercase. (laughs) And so did you have, did you see the memo? Did you see the memo? Did you see the memo? memo. I have the, I have the memo right here. Um, it's it's just still so good. I mean, right right from the start, the whole opening scene of them driving to work and like Ron Livingston's character Peter is trying to get in the lane that's moving the fastest, and whichever lane he gets in is the one that stops and the <laughs> other one moves. And I'm like, We've all been there. Yes. We've all been there. If somehow you haven't seen Office Space, I, I don't know how that happens, but We're going to go through it. So if you're like, I haven't seen this yet, you should pause this and go see Office Space because we're going to just quote the movie over. It's going to be a total Chris Farley episode. We're like, I love the part where I love the part. I love the part. (laughs) Remember when you were in the Beatles? Remember? That was awesome. That was awesome. awesome. (laughs) So Ron Livingston, so cute. So cute. Uh, He could have this. Yes. So cute. He plays Peter. He works at this software company called Inatech. It's in Texas. He works in one of those like generic office parks that you see everywhere. Uh, And he's like a lot of people. He's unhappy at his job. He hates it. It's mind numbingly boring. He has his friends in the office, but he hates it. He hates his boss. The all the stuff with Gary Cole as the office manager is, yeah, so I'm going to need you to come in on Saturday, which if you're working, like, I, I, again, I've had this job where you're just like looking at the clock all day and you're like, it's only fucking 1030. Oh, yeah. and it's just, it just drags all day. And then for them to be like, I need you to work Saturday. It's like, no, <laughs> I know. No, and we did it for free. Like, because we're so afraid of losing our jobs. And I know, I know that feeling. Yeah, it's really frustrating. It's and the shittiest people get yes. away with stuff. Yes, yeah, because they have no conscience. So it opens with him at his shitty job. He's so unhappy. Like eight different people come up to him because he forgot to put the new cover sheets on his TPS reports, and like he has multiple managers who come up and approach him, and. It's just that it's the office politics, but it's also that like rep- 
the repetition and the mundane bullshit and the busy work that like managers give themselves to make themselves feel important. And I'm a manager, by the way, so I can say that. Yeah. <laughs> All the stuff with the printer where it's like PC load letter. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> okay. True story. True story. True story. I, I worked for uh, before this job. Um, I worked at a little public, not a little pu- publishing house. Yes. And there was a guy in the office. We had an open office space you know, cubicle culture. And he would curse under his breath around the printer. I mean, the foulest <laughs> shit you've heard in your life. We, we multiple complaints to human resources and they wouldn't do a fucking thing because he was a dude. And he oh, would say, yeah. oh, I'm around all these women who are on their period. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not kidding you. Oh. And, he, and he got away with it. He goes to another publishing house Turns out he's streaming corn on his Ooh. computer all day. And he gets <laughs> shit canned and actually has to leave the city because publishing is a small industry. So, damn, dude. Yeah, fuck I that guy. Were, fuck that guy. Yeah. And his name anyway. was Michael Bolton. Oh, I'll tell you his name. Yeah, but I, I'll tell you off the air. But yeah. he's a ski instructor in Colorado now. So, oh, damn. Well, yep. he never has to sit at a computer again he doesn't have to worry about the loading the printer anymore or having the paper jam which still happens to me (laughs) still girl i have a printer here that like just for you know for emergencies really it's like when am i ever printing things out but i have one here that shit fucks up every time yeah every time it's a pain in my ass It 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 will never work correctly never i don't know why we can't build a better printer but and cartridges are expensive and yeah. So there's all the anger at the printer. That's where we meet Samir and we meet Michael Bolton. And it's just a coincidence that that's his name. And the whole thing about like, well, why don't you change your name? No, why should I have to change? He's the one that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and Michael Bolton is like this like total like nerdy white programmer guy, but he's like really into gangsta rap and <laughs> he's like the whole thing we where all he's, know guys like this. Yes, where he's in his car and he's like rapping and he's like, you know, just like I'll bust a cap and blah blah and he's acting all tough and then he sees like a black man and he locks his door. <laughs> turns this radio down like cuz he, he's like he just likes to play gangsta. He doesn't want to actually be a tough guy, but that actor is so funny. That's um David Herman, who I guess was on Mad TV. I didn't watch Mad TV, but no, he was on there. He, he wrote for it or he was on it. I don't know. And then, yeah, so they, they all hate their jobs, but it's work. What are you going to do? And like Peter really, really hates his job. And like by 10 o'clock, he's already going to the local restaurant to get coffee, to take a break. And it's basically a TGI Fridays, but they don't right. call it that. They call it tchotchkes. <laughs> And they have the oh, most. Just also correct me. Up. I can't get <laughs> They over have it. the most obnoxious waiter. He's like, "Hey, can I get you guys some pizza shooters or jalapeno popper?" And he's all finger guns, and you know, he's got the suspenders with all the buttons. And the reason Peter likes to go there is Jennifer Aniston's character Joanna works there, and like to her, it's just a waitressing gig. Like she's wearing the minimum amount of flair, which are the little buttons on her her suspenders and she's just trying to make just trying to get by but peter doesn't ask her out yet because he has a girlfriend who drags him to a uh hypno a hypnotist like a hypno what is he an occupational (laughs) hypnotherapist (laughs) who puts him in a very oh my god he says the funniest thing before this he says Every day is worse than the day before it. So every day that you see me, it's the worst day of my life. <laughs> and the therapist and like is all the, Yes, and the therapist <laughs> is like, that's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> and he asks, like, can you zonk me out so I don't even know I've been at work all day, which is pretty much what Severance is about on Apple. So if you want to see that sort of thing, go watch Severance on Apple, which yeah. has... A, has owes a lot to office space i will say i actually i mean the show the office owes a lot to office space <laughs> like all that it, stuff. absolutely yeah yes so the hypnoth- hypnotist like puts him in a deep relaxed like state 
but then he has a heart attack and dies before I'm sorry to laugh, but he does. And uh, before he can take him out. So he just is kind of living in this like newfound laid back attitude and he just doesn't care anymore. And he sleeps it's all so day. Delirious. Yes. It makes me so happy. Yeah, he sleeps all day. He doesn't come into work on the weekend like he's supposed to. His girlfriend breaks up with him. And she's like, I've been cheating on you! Which was a running joke before about how everyone knows that she's cheating on him. Except for him, apparently. Uh, We also meet Lawrence, the neighbor, who the walls are so thin in their apartment that he can hear everything that's going on over there. And he's like, put it on Channel 9, they're doing the breast exams! (laughs) And he's just like he's so funny. Like he just he works a construction job. He, but he seems like he seems very happy at what he's doing. Like yeah, it's good work, and uh, he he gets paid well. And then he's off on his weekends. Like he doesn't have to deal with the bullshit. Yeah, and Peter asks yeah. him like, "Does anyone ever say to you you've got a case of the Mondays?" And the way no he- man they'll beat the shit out of you. <laughs> no man, I I imagine someone will beat the shit out of you for that or. Or when he asks him, like, what would you do if you had a million dollars? He says, uh, I'd probably do it once. Do it once. <laughs> and he's like, which makes me. And he's, and he's dead serious, dead serious. And he's like, um, well, that's not really what the question is. And, but that's, that's what you would do. And he's like, yeah, you know, and I think if I had a million dollars, I, I think I could make that happen. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> He's just so real, like, he he doesn't give a fuck, and, I mean, he's basically what Peter is turning into now, like, Peter, he doesn't give a shit about work, really, he, he wanders in, like, super late, actually, first, he doesn't even go into work, he just goes into the restaurant, and he sees Jennifer Aniston, and he's like, hey, like, I really want to take you to lunch, and... I'm going to go to the restaurant next door. And of course, she's like, do you mean Flingers or Chili's? Because like, they, <laughs> they all have names like that. And he's like, I'll be over at Flingers. And if you want to join, that would be awesome. And he, I mean, he's really cute. So duh, he, she's going to go. And yeah. this dude is just like, I don't like my job and I don't think I'm going to go anymore. And she's like, um, okay. Like, I don't know if that would really get you a second date anymore. Um, but maybe it would if you look like Ron Livingston. Yeah. And he's like, I just want to take you out to dinner and then we could go back to my apartment and watch Kung Fu. And apparently that's the magic word. <laughs> she loves <laughs> Kung Fu. And she's like, yeah, okay. Yeah. And her whole thing about, I don't really like to talk about my flair. Like, she just wants to do her work. Like, just let her serve you your pizza shooters she doesn't want to deal with her flair meanwhile back in the office they have hired these consultants and they're both named bob (laughs) the bobs the bob and they're interviewing everyone basically everyone is interviewing for their job and they're looking to lay people off and they interview Michael Bolton and Michael Bolton even pretends to like Michael Bolton music just to make them like him so that he could keep his job. And Peter just wanders in super late and he's really honest. He's like, I don't care. He says, it's not that I'm lazy. It's just I don't care. <laughs> like, and he's on. And like, I got too many bosses. And yeah. I got too many people on my ass. And I have no motivation. Yes. I have no motivation. Right. They need Ellie in this movie from Below Tech Med. <laughs> <laughs> I am a chief too. <laughs> and, well, and he's just like, uh, yeah, he's like, I come in like 15 minutes late and then I zone out for like an hour. Uh, Like, he's like, maybe I work 15 minutes the whole week. Like, he's very real. And it because Peter is a mediocre white man, they love his realness. And they're like, <laughs> he's going to fail upward. They're like in love with him now because of that. Now, by the way, if that was a woman, she would probably be immediately fired. But in this Anybody movie. Anybody else would be fired. Yes. Right. But because he's Peter, like, they're like, we're into that. Like, what a what a refreshing person to be so honest. Meanwhile, we have Milton. Poor Milton. Stephen oh, Root. my heart. The Milton stuff actually 
doesn't play as funny for me now. Instead, I get frustrated on Milton's behalf. <laughs> yeah, it's mean. <laughs> and I want to know, Mil- I hope I hope Milton's okay. I well, been- he's okay, right, in the end? Yeah, he's okay in the end. It's, Milton's whole thing is played by Stephen Root. And he's wearing these huge, thick, like, bifocals that make his eyes huge. And he has been working there clearly for a long time. And he's, but he's weird and everyone treats him like shit. They're like, he like, he just wants to listen to his radio at a reasonable volume and do his that's work. Me. And he wants to, and that's me, by the way, <laughs> I used to get in trouble because my music was always too loud. I also and I'm like, listen I just to need this. Yes. I was like, I also listened to a radio in my cube and like, but I kept it real low. Like nobody could hear it. But every once I, in a while, a manager would be like, be all there was a, about it. There was a woman. I forget her name. She's, I'm sure she's dead now, but she would come to our floor. And this is when people used to smoke in break rooms. Yes. At, and they smoked in the break room and she could hear my radio and she'd run over and goes, this is not the beach party. She was German, by the way, <sighs> and would scream at me. And then people like Margo, you know, we really don't like music here. I know you like music, but it's very distracting. And I'm like, oh, yeah. If you're listening. Well, now, I mean, everyone just wears ear pods and like the right. little earbuds or whatever. And they tune out the whole world, which is fine. Like, you know, before the pandemic, I started at the tech company, the same place I work now. And like lots of people wear headphones while they work and listen to whatever the fuck they want to listen to while they work. And it's super normal. It wasn't as normal in 99 to have your headphones on while you were working. It, it, It gave the impression that you weren't really working or paying attention really working right maybe you weren't (laughs) but i worked very hard sonia yeah (laughs) no i didn't (laughs) well and so i feel bad for milton because milton is a weirdo but he seems to be doing his job and they're just constantly like yeah we're gonna need you to like move your desk in here and you know so we could put some more boxes in your cube eventually they take his stapler the only one that works they like eventually they move him to the basement like dude can't even have a piece of birthday cake without people like taking it from him this poor man and the bobs realized that like milton actually got laid off like years ago but due to a glitch in the system, Milton is still getting a check. And but no one's going to tell him that he's actually laid off. They're just going to like, no, we fi- we fixed the glitch and the rest will work itself out. And the joke is like a throwaway joke. Like it's like, haha, fuck Milton. But it is a good example of what it's like to work in office culture where they don't you know, care. They don't care. They don't- I, you know, they don't, you know, I have my, uh, there's a TikTok video that I have that I've spread around before, but as a woman who works in HR, it's just like, do your work and go the fuck home. Yeah. You know, that one. Yeah. And it's like, they don't love you. No. They don't love you. It's, like, you have to have boundaries. Yes. My boss always says, your job will not love you back. Right. So that's a good boss. Yes. And she's a, gr- and she's a great boss. And I'm a, I'm a boss and I try really hard to be a good boss. I think I'm a good boss. I, you, you are. Know, I I can be a little bit of a momager sometimes, but I really do. I try to do right by my people. But like nobody's doing right by Milton. The Like right. the dude's working. He clearly is one of the only people that's actually doing work in the office. And now he's not even getting paid. And they're like, that's fine. He'll he'll fucking figure it out. And it's like, could you just fucking fire that poor man? <laughs> I feel so Get him bad out of his misery. I know. But so there's a whole thing where like every time we see Milton, he's being treated like shit. And every time Milton's like, I'm going to set the building on fire, like very ca- like just mumbling under his breath, like this, this, this is the last straw. I'm just I'm going to have to set the building on fire. And I'm like, oh, poor Milton. Oh, uh, I also want to talk about Jennifer Aniston in this movie because she was the biggest star in the movie. I- I don't know why. I mean, I think she's great, yeah. but I don't know why she's in it. I, I kind of, even then, I was kind of like, she's huge star. She was married to Brad Pitt, y'all. She like, was a huge TV star. And, and she was always doing yeah. movies on her break because I think she was like, I'm not just that. And here's the thing. I love Jennifer Aniston on TV. 
I don't think Jennifer Aniston is a movie star. Maybe we've talked about this on the podcast before. I'm sure we've talked about it. Like, yeah. she's so, so good on television. Like, I don't know why it doesn't translate to movies. Like, it just doesn't for me. She's great in this because it's a supporting role. Right. And, and she's adorable. Everybody drink. Like, obviously, Ron Livingston wants to go out with her. She's adorable. But, like, this was around the time where Hollywood was like, Jennifer Aniston's a movie star. And I'm like, she isn't. She isn't a movie star. No, like, she was in so many movies in the yes. 90s and in the early aughts. Like, all, and this might be her best movie. <laughs> I think it is. I mean, honestly, it's the best movie. It's the only one I watch yeah. of her movies. I can't think of anything that she's been in that I watch. Yeah. Yeah, except Morning Show, the one that she does on Apple that nobody else <laughs> that I hate, yeah. but I watch it. You yeah. know what? That movie, like, or that show, like, I don't watch that show. It wins all kinds of fucking awards. It's nominated for everything. And I was like, maybe it is really good, but I'm I'm not watching it. it, But I know you love it. I love it. I'll miss it. It's stupid. But but I think, yeah, there's it's almost like this is a Comedy Central movie. Like it is. Yeah. Like. I mean, it played to us when we saw it was this and Dick were two movies I saw in the movie theater <laughs> that nobody else saw. And I was howling with yes. laughter like it. But I, I can see like it's more of a TV movie like it is. It is. It feels like I mean, and that's my judge for you. Like, you know, he is primarily known for Beavis and Butthead and King of the Hill at the time. None of his other movies really took off after he did idiocracy which was another one that didn't do super well in the theater but like people love to watch now yeah. and is um strangely accurate <laughs> about things that are happening right now but that one also is, for me isn't as funny as this one no no i feel the same way i think it's got a couple of great jokes like yeah. ass the movie that's just called <laughs> ass <laughs> oh, this is someone's butt it's that just cracks a, me up. it's just or, or there's a show called ow my balls and it's just <laughs> it's just a, dudes getting hit in the balls and i'm always like um i would probably watch ow my balls <laughs> your son would love that <laughs> calvin would give it all the stars yeah calvin would be like highest recommend <laughs> to ow my balls <laughs> no no <laughs> it's so funny but all the stuff in um idiocracy with like the the wrestler that's a president and just the dumbest people like all of it is like the idea yeah the the ideas of idiocracy are funnier than the actual movie idiocracy but this one is just i think funny from beginning to end like there's there's things in this movie that make me laugh every time I remember watching it with my parents once, like a bunch of us were home at Christmas and my dad just about fell on the floor. <laughs> he worked for, for IBM for like 30 years and he was like, oh my God, the TPS report made him laugh so hard. He goes, oh my God, just the, yeah, when you have like 10 bosses and everyone yeah. CCs each other in the email, it's like, Margo, did you know to check that thing before you sent it out? And I'm like, ah. Oh. Yeah, so they can show that they're they're doing work. See how valuable I am? I've... I I warned Peter about the TPS report again because I'm super valuable to the company. Please don't lay me off. Like sometimes it's the people who create the most noise that are doing the least amount of work. Oh yeah. And that's what these managers are in this company. They just they create a lot of busy work and they create a lot of noise to make themselves look busy and feel important. Yay. Good for them. So um, Peter is like totally blowing off work. He's doing like a life work balance that's more life than work. He's going fishing. He's and then wandering into the office and gutting fish in his cube, which is unacceptable. Unacceptable. There's a scene where he's walking through the office or maybe it's just in the trailer. But uh, Gary Cole is saying, oh, no. Hey, yeah, (laughs) it's in the movie. I've seen this movie thousands of times, y'all. Yes. So I know it like inside and out. But I, I told Sonia, like, I only got halfway through before we got on this call. But I know this movie really well. <laughs> anyway, when Peter is walking and then P- Gary Cole's like, yeah. And then he just goes right around yes. him and keeps going. That makes me laugh so fucking hard because I had a boss like that. Yeah. That, like, would, and we were all trying to duck under our desks when he came around. Yes. Because he never asked, 
Are you on the phone? Are you doing something? No, you, know, you have to would... stop what you're doing. Uh, no, it's the worst. And honestly, like people well, like that at work. Yeah, you want to avoid them. And I was thinking how I would like to start doing that to people in my life. <laughs> when yes. they just start talking to me, I'm just going to be like, Burr. like, I'm just going to walk right <laughs> around. Keep that, on going. That, that one gesture makes me laugh so fucking hard because I wanted to do that so many times yes. in my life. Like, it's, it's just going to not be anything. It's not. Yeah, like, no, I, I can't even waste one second of my energy engaging with you, which is what the energy that Peter is giving uh, uh Lumberg and all he's just like and he's giving the job and like the more he slacks off the more the bobs seem to be into what he's putting down and they decide that they are going to promote Peter and they're going to be firing all these other people including Samir and Michael two people who were actually like their best programmers in the office and like outsource their jobs with just so fucking technical and accurate and it happens yeah and so they get really really pissed obviously and they decide to use michael's virus that he has programmed that he learned from superman 3 <laughs> <laughs> about like rounding up these fractions and putting like pennies in a bank account and over years it'll add up to a lot of money so this is their plan that they're gonna do and they film the plan it's so funny they film it like like it's a gangster movie right like damn it feels good, good to be a gangster. gangster and it's like this slow motion like hip-hop like they're pulling off a heist kind of vibe while they do this very simple thing of passing discs between each other and uploading a virus <laughs> it's really well done and that's when they uh steal the they have stolen the printer from the office and they drag it out to a field and all of that is filmed like a mob hit like the way that they are going after that printer and i remember seeing this in the i laughed so hard i cried in the theater yeah. the first time i saw this like oh, oh, so many times i've wanted to do that and to watch them living my dream <laughs> <laughs> i'm so jealous so jealous um they also uh, get invited to like a, bar a co-worker's barbecue. And uh, I want to give a shout out to the actor who plays Drew, who is just like, I'm going to take that new girl from logistics. I'm going to show her my oaf. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then they show some outtakes over the credits where he's like, she's going to go for a ride on the boner coaster. <laughs> <And> he's all, <laughs> wee! <laughs> My brother John would do that all the time. Oh, oh, oh. So, so stupid. <laughs> like, it's just so, so funny that, like, it, it doesn't forward the movie any more. Like, it doesn't need to be there. It's just, we know people like this, and it, it makes me laugh so hard, all of that. So they're not supposed to tell anyone what they're doing. And of course, Peter immediately tells Joanna because he can't shut his yapper. And she rightfully is like, um, that's stealing. And he's like, no, no. See, you're just not understanding. But he is. He is stealing. He's stealing. He is. And it's like, I get it. But also it's stealing. So they, you're going to get caught. Yeah. And they go to the barbecue and that's where Drew, Mr. O-Face, tells Peter that Joanna slept with Lumberg. And Peter is such a fucking man baby that he can't deal with it. And he's like totally shitty to her about it. And then it's revealed later in the movie. It's not even the guy, not the dude from the office. It's like someone, a young guy who worked somewhere else. Like, and then he's like, I've made a huge mistake. You made a huge mistake anyway. It's not your right. business who she sleeps with before you. And she goes off on him for it. And I was like, yeah, you tell him. And then she gets into it with her boss when he tells her she needs to wear more <laughs> flair. And he doesn't tell her what she wants. She's like, how many do you want me to wear? Yeah. What do you want to do? And he's like, well, the minimum is 15. And if you oh, want to do the you. bare minimum... You could give more. Do you see that person over there? They're doing this. Can't you do that? Oh, so, so fucking annoying. And I love it. She's like, you want me to express myself? You want to see my flair? <laughs> she flips him off. Here's my flair. Here's my flair. It's, 
again, Jennifer Aniston is very funny. Like she's got great timing and she is really, here's my flair here. Like her finger, like right in his face. She's funny as shit. She is funny as shit. So now uh, Peter goes, he checks the bank account and he realizes they have stolen way more money than they thought. And it's already (laughs) over like $300,000 after like two days. And they're like, we're going to get caught. And they are right. They are going to get caught. It's happening. Luckily for them that, oh, and by the way, they're such nerds that they're trying to think that maybe they could launder the money. And then they look up what money laundering is in the dictionary. (laughs) Which is something teenage Sonia totally would have done. I would have looked up. I don't know what that means. I'll have to look it up in my dictionary. And I had the world's biggest dictionary. And I would look it up. So I love that scene. They are right. Like the company knows that money is missing, but they haven't quite figured it out yet. But luckily for them, there's an awkward office birthday party where Milton doesn't get any cake. (laughs) And for Milton... That's just the last straw. (laughs) Like, they've moved him to the basement. They've asked him to kill the cockroaches while he's down there. And then he doesn't get cake. He's like, I could set the building on fire. And uh, he does. (laughs) Yay, Milton! (laughs) He sets the building on fire. He takes the money. that Because Peter's like, I'm going to try to make this right. And he gets all these travelers checks and he slides an envelope under Lumberg's door trying to like make it right and eventually Milton finds that money so the movie ends ends with like Milton's on his tro- like living his best life he's on a tropical island like uh and he's complaining to the waiter excuse me um I ordered a margarita with no salt no salt <laughs> and you brought me a pina colada <laughs> like <laughs> I said no salt. I'm going to give you a bad review. I'm going to give you a bad review. But the building, uh, the building burns down. And so that's all the evidence. Like, yeah, it's like a kind of a cop out ending, but like, whatever, who cares? Because it's so funny. And Peter gets a job working with Lawrence doing construction work. And fucking A, man. Yeah, fuck. And he, I love it. He's like, fucking A. Fucking A. <laughs> and I I do that quite a bit. And like Michael and Samir get another job like an, at another tech company and they're like happy to have it because they were really afraid that they were going to go to quote pound me in the ass federal prison. <laughs> and they all they wanted was to go to the cushy resort prison where they get conjugal visits. That's what they were worried about. And my, Michael's like, I'm a free man and I haven't had a conjugal visit in six months. <laughs> <laughs> Such a solid joke. But it's, I mean, it's it's not even 90 minutes. It's a comedy with jokes. Like anyone who's worked an office job of any kind or may- even if you haven't worked an office job, I think we all know what it's like to deal with coworkers. And yeah. there's so much that's relatable to this. And I just, I think this movie gets, it's funnier, like, every time I watch it. Uh, yeah, it's very prescient. And it's, uh, yeah, it makes me smile and laugh the whole entire time. Yeah. I, um... I read a few things that apparently Mike Judge was told to approach Ben Affleck or Matt Damon for the lead. And I'm like, oh, thank you. And I was like, Ron Livingston is perfect. He does a great job. You have to have somebody that no one's seen before. Yes. You know what I mean? You didn't have a name person. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think. uh, I, I hadn't seen him before. He was new to me. Yeah. I, I think he was like, he played like a friend in Swingers. Or something like he wasn't we should like do swingers one day. We should absolutely talk about a movie that probably hasn't aged well. But yeah, that's where he was from. And then I also read that Kate Hudson read for Jennifer Aniston's part. And I was like, she would have been good too. She would have been good too. She's adorable. Everybody drink. We did Bridesmaids last week. She's adorable. No, Bride Wars. Bride Wars. What did I say? Bridesmaids. Oh. No, we, we definitely do. Bridesmaids we should definitely today. do bridesmaids. One, but we just did a wedding movie, so we need. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Um, I forgot to write down ninety nine movies. So here, I'll just look at a list of ninety nine movies and I'll pick some. <laughs> 
My, it's a great year for movies. It we, is. We've talked ones. Yeah. Yeah. We've we've talked about these before. So um, here, let me pick a few. Eyes Wide Shut came out in 99. I actually hated that movie when I first saw it and then rewatched it last year. And I was like, no, I think this movie's really good. I remain unimpressed, That's, but I get it. It's not my thing. Yeah. Uh, Girl Interrupted. Great movie. I like that movie. Yeah, that's a it's good not. One. It's a laugh riot. It's hilarious. <laughs> Magnolia. Yeah, good movie. I like that one. Never been kissed. I haven't seen that one to be honest. It's the Drew Barrymore one, right? Where she plays a high school student. She's like thirty or yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then like her and a teacher like hook up. It's it's not appropriate i that's one that's not going to age well i'll tell you that we should cover that though. we should definitely cover that uh varsity blues boy that's a sexist trashy film yep i don't want your life that's what i remember from varsity blues. i worked at mademoiselle magazine before it closed and we had ali larder is that ali larder who's in varsity blues i believe that she's is correct the, yes yes she's in, in a whipped whip cream, cream bikini. bikini yes and her publicist called the magazine screaming because they mentioned the whipped cream bathing suit thing in a story. And they were like, she's more than that. She's blah, 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 blah. And all I could think of was like, girl, you wore a fucking whipped cream on your what? titties yeah. for a movie. Sorry. Of course, like, that's going to, yeah. Exactly. It's super memorable. People are going to talk about like it. That kid who put his dick in the cherry pie. You know, I mean, that's, that's what we that's were talking it. about in 99. It was dudes. Yeah. Dudes humping cherry pies in the whipped cream bikinis. Come on, man. Come on. Anyway. Other movies. The Insider. That's Great a, movie. That's a good one. Oh, this one's on our list. The General's Daughter. Yes. Yeah. It's got it's <laughs> got it's got, it's got it's got hot it's got hot stow. It's got hot stow. Madeline Stowe. We gotta definitely get to that one. Uh Any Given Sunday. I've never seen that. I like that one. Uh, I like football movies. I have no interest in watching football games, but I love football movies. So, oh no, I do know that one. Sorry. Yeah, and then yeah. uh, let's see, a few more. Runaway Bride. We should talk about that one someday. It tries my patience. That's I, why. I that's Roberts, why we should do it. But ooh, yeah. Uh, let's let's skip all over these. Um, let's do like two more. Um. No, I already did all these. How about Star Wars Phantom Menace? No, thanks. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I saw it at the time and I was like, that's, I was like, I, I like being in Star Wars land. And I was like, that's fine. And then everyone hated it. And I was like, I hate it too. And then I watched it again a couple years ago. And I was like, mm, it's not that bad. Like, it's not good either. It's so not. It's not, it's not good, but it's not as bad as it, I would rather watch Phantom Menace over Attack of the Clones. Like Attack of the Clones is boring. I, yeah, I mean, like a bologna sandwich and a shit sandwich. I'll take the bologna sandwich, but it's still like not great. True. Uh, the Green Mile. That movie messes me up every time I yes. see it. I cry and i cry and i just sob myself hysterically so it's so fucked up so sad and then uh this will be the last one man on the moon that's a messed up movie jim, boy does that movie to try my patient jim carrey is doing he's doing his andy kaufman in there and i'm like yes yes we're all impressed jim carrey i yeah. i i wanted to like it because it's Mila Schwarman who had done yeah. The People versus Larry Flint, a movie I really, really liked when I saw it because I was like, this is super interesting to me. I didn't know all that story. And I guess I, I had a man in the moon super. I was like, whatever. It was trying too hard for me. But yes, it's not my not my jam. Do you want to hear the top 10 songs for when this movie came out? Yeah, I do. Okay, so we have number 10, Jumper by Third Eye Blind. I like that song. I do too. I like Third Eye Blind. I know. I, mean, I, know, I know he's a dickhead, but. Yeah, they're, they're just, it's, that's some like good solid like pop music and I like that. Stuff, yeah, so. I like it too. 
It's just they sound just like the Rob Thomas band. Totally, they sound just like Matchbox Twenty yeah. and right. They're 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 totally interchangeable. Semi Sonic and yeah, yeah, they all sound the same. Number nine, Angel by Sarah McLaughlin. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even listen to that song because of it being used in those animal commercials. I can't. Uh, uh, this song you can't get away from. Still, Goo Goo Dolls slide. I still like that song. Yeah. But there's yeah. another band like Third Eye Blind. They could all go on yes. tour together. Yeah. And honestly, they could take turns like going <laughs> on stage. Like just, just why are you playing bass for us? <laughs> okay. Play That'll be fun. I'm all sure. That's Third Eye Blind. No, that's yeah. Google Dolls. Uh, if you say so. Whatever. <laughs> uh, number seven. I love this song. Heartbreak Hotel. Whitney Houston. Yep. Featuring Faith Evans and Kelly Price. Yeah. Damn good song. So good. This is uh, uh, the ba- number six, Backstreet Boys, All I Have to Give. Backstreet Boys have a lot of bops. Like I love Backstreet Boys. Yeah. yeah. Uh, number five, Brandy, have you ever? We love Brandy. Uh, number four, Share, Believe. This was her big Oh, yeah. Hit. If you believe in life, I can love. love. Yep. Uh, number three, Deborah Cox. Nobody's supposed to be here. Is oh, that what it's called? I don't, I don't know, know that, that song. I don't know that one. Uh, number two, Britney Spears. Baby, one more time. I mean, fucking jam. It's still fucking dope. I still love that song. Yep. And number one, Monica, Angel of Mine. Oh yes, yes, that's a good song too. Yeah. What else are you dorking out about, my friend? I forgot to write it down. So I'm going from my memory. Yes. I am so prepared today, y'all. <laughs> Both of um, us are. I didn't write down the uh, 99 movies. Like, yeah, we're, that's, it's fine. We're good. Uh, so on Netflix, I saw Monsters, which is the Eric and Lyle story. Yes, I am uh, like halfway through. I've worked, I've watched the first four episodes. What do you think? I have mixed feelings. Um, Same. I think it's very entertaining to watch. I don't know how much of it is true. I find it. Look, I, I feel like I, I've seen like interviews with them and I've seen like other things. And I was like, I, I, I believe them on the abuse front. Mm -hmm. And so the show feels weird because it's kind of fetishizing them their abuse yeah and yeah like they're making it look sexy and it's sexual yeah sexual thank you that's where i'm getting and it makes me feel icky which is probably the point but maybe yeah and i'm like uh, but again i'm only halfway through so maybe maybe there's a switch in there somewhere where it'll make me feel differently but right now i'm watching it and it makes me feel icky yeah it gives me the ick um i think the most of the actors i think are great i mean like a harvey they had javier bardem yeah um and uh chloe sevigny yeah uh and i think the 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 boys are great the the actors that play eric and lyle i think are really the woman who plays leslie abramson is really good yes uh she's a proper use of that hair i mean that really (laughs) hair is awesome um i i do like um nathan lane playing dominic Dominic oh yes yes he's doing a really good job really good and you know, it does bring back a time and a place. And I, at the time, I thought they were full of shit. And then I 100% yeah. thought they were full of shit back Absolutely. in the day. But then, of course, now I'm like, you know, it totally makes sense that they would behave the way they did. And we, we I think you and I just talked about it off the air. Yeah. Like the way they killed their parents was so over the top. Like that's. There's some it, real anger there. Like, right. Not just you're writing me out of the will anger. Like there's. Yeah, or you were mean to me, or you were yeah. strict. You know, it it goes way beyond that. With like, so anyway, I have mixed feelings about yeah, it. Same. Um, I also saw the show you recommended to me on Hulu, uh, with oh, How to Die Alone. Yes, I love it. It's so it's so good, y'all. Like, check it out. I haven't watched like the most recent episode because that's what I'm watching tonight. But right, it's it's really really great. Like. A perfect mix of like comedy and drama and 
like she's so so great um i i need to look up her name right now so that i can give her her credit how to it's so well done she plays this woman that works at jfk airport natasha rothwell Yes. And she wants, what was she in before? She was in the first season of the white Lotus and I heard she's coming back for the next season. So, Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I want to see her in everything. She's wonderful. Yes. And then uh, tonight I'm going to tomorrow night, maybe I'll move it to tomorrow night, but Amazon has um, the tragically hip is a band that I love. They're, their Canadian band, their lead singer died from brain cancer. Fuck cancer. Yeah. Fuck cancer. uh, Seven years ago. And there's so they've been they've been together for over 30 years at that point. So it's this four part documentary on Amazon. And uh, I have friends that were hip fans and they were texting me like, you're going to cry. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm just going to warn you. So I'm like, okay. so that's something that's on my list. And then Real Housewives of Salt Lake. Yes. Salt Lake City. (laughs) That show. Deliver. It delivers every week it it is back with like they're just they're nice. all kooks they're just kooks <laughs> they're like, kooky yes bronwyn with her outfits yep ah oh, i love her so far i mean she could turn out to be an asshole but so far i like her i like the other woman that's dating an osmond <laughs> that broke up 16 times yeah that's apparently he's like their prince harry or something that's what they say it, that the osmonds are like royalty which they are i mean it's mormon culture yeah um and then i'm trying to think of anything else i'm watching what are you dorking out about maybe i'll uh i what I started the first episode of Nothing But a Good Time on Paramount. Plus. I saw that too. Sorry, I finished yeah. that yesterday, it's, and uh, I knew it all, but it was yeah. great. I, yeah, it's all about like eighties, like hair metal, like how they got how these different bands got started, and a lot of the like totally banana shit that they got up to. Um, I've only watched the first episode, but yeah, th- I'm not learning anything, but that's no. okay. Like, I'm happy to like. Yeah hear the stories right from them and some of the, i guess and the stories from like that they have and you know i feel like i heard all the stories before about drunk rock stars yeah but these guys took it to another level the drinking and drugging yes and like ozzy osborne we, tommy lee is talking about this i don't know if this is this is like the second or third episode but the ozzy osborne was high with motley crew and they were running havoc through a hotel and Ozzy found a guy who was leaving his shoes out to get shine. Oh yes. And Ozzy took a shit. In the shit. So gross. I'm, they're such pigs. They're so gross. These dudes, it's just like boys behaving badly times a million. Yeah. They're and, and yeah. there's one time where they talk about the warrant video for cherry pie. And there's one member of warrant that's like, yeah, it was kind of sexist. You know, kind of, <laughs> Okay. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, they don't really explore that at all. You know, they yeah. do have women in there, but um, you know, it's all in service of the men. Except, yes. you know, Vixen, of course, is there and and I love I loved Vixen. I thought yeah. they were great. I mean, I loved all this music. I mean, especially Guns N' Roses. I yep. used to drive from San Francisco to LA to see, I've seen the Guns N' Roses a bunch of times, but I remember the Sunset Strip in the late '80s. I was there. Of course, you times. were. Margot was yeah, a rocker that's my, chick. That I would totally. If you build a time machine, I would totally want to go like 1987 Sunset Strip. Just walk up and down, big hair, yep. <laughs> just get into fights with people, and I don't know. I just would love it. But it's very entertaining. It is very entertaining. I have more to go, but. I mean, I'm what, sorry, keep going. No, it's all good. No, I meant like I'm only one episode into that, but I have um, more to watch. But I'm I'm into it so far. Like, yeah, maybe maybe I'll learn a few things. But again, I find it very entertaining. I also watched be- The Golden Bachelorette because I don't know, man. I just wanted to check this out for myself. I have to say I've never watched The Bachelor or The Bachelorette or any of its various spinoffs. But I was very curious to see, like, the Golden Bachelorette is a woman whose husband passed away, like, eight or ten years ago from cancer. She was on the Golden Bachelor, and she actually left early because her daughter was having postpartum depression, and she wanted to help her daughter. So she left, and they brought her back as the Golden Bachelorette. So she's, like, 
60, like early 60s. So all the men are like late 50s and 60s. And I was very, it's basically, it was like 25, like embodiments of dad jokes. Like they're like living, breathing dad jokes. And I was like, there's no way these dudes are all really this wholesome. Like it, it can't be real. Like it can't be. They're all just like, you know, like they get out of the limo and they toss her a ball and she catches it and they're like, I heard you were a good catch. You know, and I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> and there's this one guy named Jack, and he is like a caterer or runs a catering business in Chicago, and he's got that Chicago accent, and he's wearing like a pink sports coat. And I'm like, we should just make this dude the host. Like, he talks to everyone. The camera was in love with him. They were following him wherever he was. I think he got more screen time than she did. Because <laughs> he was just like, he was touring the house. He started cooking for everyone. All the dudes are like, I hope he sticks around longer because he's like <laughs> a really good cook. Like, he's very, and he was clearly drunk, like, right away. I'm like, I don't know if he's the right match for her, but... He's very entertaining. Um, yeah, it seems... Here's... All right, y'all. Here. I hate to ruin it for people who are watching The Golden Bachelorette, but um, none of these dudes are going to work out. <laughs> she, Why do you say that? None of them live in the same city. That's what I always wonder, too. They like, don't. How is that supposed to work out? Like, she... I forget where she where lives. Where does she live? I honestly I forget but I remember noting in my head I was like none of them live in the same place with her like they're all they all play up their devotion to their family because that's her thing right she like left the show to like be with her daughter and be with her grandkids and all of this stuff and they're all like you know, my kids are this and my grandkids and, you know, all this stuff. And I'm like, they're not going to pick up and move and leave their family. And I was like, she might get a proposal at the end, but I'm very curious if it will go beyond that. Well, there's a guy, Gil Ramirez, who they just said his past has been revealed that he stalked a girlfriend, an ex-girlfriend. One, so the, the one of these old that- dudes? Yeah, Gil Ramirez, and her name's Joan Vassett. Yes, yes. So here's I the, just saw this on People. Here's the other thing about these sh- people. People magazine's the best. God bless them. Here's the thing about these shows, too, and they, they really need to learn this shit because it went down in The Bachelorette, from what I understand. Y'all need to start doing some background checks on these people. Like, yeah. you're, you're setting yourself up for fucking failure, and you're setting these people up for failure. Like, a man who's had a restraining order against him, or had any kind of charges filed for stalking, he shouldn't be on your show. He shouldn't even be an option for your bachelorette. Like, that's it bullshit. Always it always happens, yes. though. There's like, always something. Yeah. And they do the same thing on Love is Blind and all these like perfect match and all the shit. I was like, these people are like, you need to give them psychological tests. Like, are they here just to build their social media influence? That's not good enough. They shouldn't be on the show. Like, that's the other thing about the Golden Bachelorette. These are all old men who are not interested in building up their social media. They probably don't even know what that is. Like, that makes them... I'm on the Facebook. I'm on the Facebook. Like, they that's one of the things that's ruining all these dating shows or maybe that's the thing people love about these dating shows is they go on these shows because they want to make money off their social media they want to be influencers we're seeing it on below deck right now ellie's just on there because she's looking for her brand deals basically like the balkan biscuit yes the (laughs) her only instagram yeah um these golden bachelors they're not here to build up their social media following and that's what makes the show different than the other dating shows um i'm gonna keep watching for a little while and i might get annoyed and quit but we'll see (laughs) stick with it for now (laughs) i also want to mention we mentioned brandy earlier uh i was in the mood to hide from the world for a little while this week so i went and saw her movie the front room and it's one of those a24 horror movies where she is 
uh, married. She's pregnant. She lives in this nice house and she takes in or they take in, I should say, his stepmother, who's quite elderly and she's a bananas person and very manipulative and all kinds of weird shit happens. And I don't want to spoil it for people. And the reviews for the movie aren't very good, but I still kind of liked it. And did I, you go to a theater? I did. And here's why I, and here's why I picked this. Because I looked at the theater beforehand and nobody else was in it. My friend Jennifer and I went and there was nobody else there. And I was like, that's what I want. I could have gone and seen something that had a crowd and I purposely picked the theater that was empty. Well, you I, had did you have COVID recently or no, no, no. Other I have, people I have, no. No, I haven't had COVID recently and I didn't pick it because of COVID. I think I just I wanted didn't want to be around people. I didn't want to be around people. I, I brought my my friend Jennifer went with me and she listens to the show. Hi, Jennifer. Um we went together. Maureen? Yes. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Jennifer. Yeah. We we both love scary movies. So this is our time to shine. And I knew I was like, Jennifer will see this with me. And she reached out to me a while ago and was like, you know, you want to see the Brandy movie. And I was like, of course I do. Of course I want to see the Brandy movie. Have we met? So I was glad to go and sit and watch this. It's super A24. It's almost a spoof of A24 movies. Except it's not made to be a spoof of A24 movies. <laughs> Everyone's doing horror movies now. I yeah. was going by this, the Night Nighthawk Cinema yep. in Windsor Terrace and everything. And I know it's September, October, but I'm I'm surprised at the like A-list celebrities that are yeah. definitely they're starting to do this. I think it's great. I think it's great, too. And I think it's because these are the kinds of movies that get people to come to the theater. Because like, you want to scream with other people. Yes. That's the fun part. Yeah. If you're not starring in a Marvel movie or a Star Wars movie or something that's like branded that people feel like they have, you know, your Deadpool, Wolverine, whatever, like horror movies are those movies that people like to see with a crowd. So if you're looking to make a movie that people will actually go to the theater to see teenagers want to be scared. They love that shit. They will go see it. And there's, Horror movies are more fun with a crowd. Or at least certain, Absolutely. Or at least certain ones are for sure. So, if they have jump scares for sure. Yeah. Um, I didn't want that this week, which is why I saw it the front room. <laughs> 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 but it was still fun to go. And I do want to go see the substance with um Demi yeah, Moore but, and Margaret yeah. Qualley. Um, it's on my list and I might I might go and see that one tomorrow. That feels like a a good afternoon watch. So I'll be seeing it was that. playing in that theater, but it was like nine thirty tonight. I'm like, ah, you're like, I'll be asleep. You're like, I'll be, I'll in, be asleep. I'll be falling asleep by that. You'd have to, yeah, drag me home. Yeah, they'd have to, <laughs> they have to shake me awake when it's over. Yeah, no, it's on my list for sure, and I, it's getting really great reviews. So that's that's on my Patrick list. from F This Movie has been raving about it. Ooh, on okay. socials. Yeah, well, I he has great taste in horror he movies does. so i will definitely well that makes me even more excited to see it uh yeah that's my list um that's it, a great list Sonia. it's a good list thank you yours is a good <laughs> list too my friend uh, thank you if you like the sound of our voices we also co-host a podcast called what a creep where we talk about creeps of the past and the present our episode out right now is hosted by margo and what did you talk about this week margo so the Know Nothing Party and nativism. So this is America in the 1840s and 50s, where we as Americans wanted to get all the immigrants out and we acted like real fucking assholes about it. We would and never do that again. Never do that again. That's what's <laughs> hilarious. And then I bring it back to what's going on in Springfield, Ohio right now, this very minute, um, which is upsetting. Yeah. Um, but we're trying to like create context and try to History is trying to teach us. That's what yes. I always think. History is trying to teach us. There are no original ideas, y'all. Uh, history right. is repeating itself. And good on you for, for digging up that story and sharing it. Because I didn't know a lot of that. So I need to pay attention more in my history class back in the day. But <laughs> whatever. Uh, so go check that out if you like that. Um, if you want to give us a review, that would be delightful like wherever you listen to your podcast and we'll, we'll make sure to like mention you on the show 
And if you have a request, we take requests. You can email us at dorkingoutshow at gmail. And if you want some stickers, give us your address. Margo will send you some stickers. They're adorable. Everybody drink. Absolutely, I will. And my friend, where can people find you on the on the internet? So I'm at brooklynfitchick.com. And that's where I am for threads and Instagram. Please follow me at those places. I'm trying to build up those places. Also, I'm at on TikTok, I'm at Brooklyn Margo. And on Twitter, I'm at Brooklyn Margo. Follow her on the things, y'all. She's always sharing clips of the movies and stuff. Yeah, I have some clips of Office Space on there, too. Yeah. So. She's killing it over there. You can killing it. killing it. You could find me at the Sonia Show. Oh. Com. oh. <laughs> Follow me on TikTok. Maybe I'll show you my O face. No, it's the Sonia Show.com, the Sonia Show Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Threads, Blue Sky. Don't forget Mastodon. You could go to Mastodon. <laughs> <laughs> and dorkingoutshow.com. Blue Sky, by the way, at Brooklyn Fitch. Yes. Yeah, you or could, Brooklyn Margo, one or the other. Honestly, you can find us on all your social media, but Dorking Out is at dorkingoutshow.com and it's on Twitter, threads, Facebook, Instagram, Blue Sky. It might be on Mastodon too. I don't know. But thank you for talking about office space with me. This is like exactly what I needed, Margo. I appreciate you. I'm going to go get my swing lane stapler now. I was told I could listen to this podcast in reasonable volume. <laughs> <laughs>